Good afternoon. First, say thanks to Pastor Don and the incredible hospitality of Westover Church. Professional as always. Thank you very much. As I think about and reflect on Howard's career, I've only known him for a handful of years. But in speaking with him and talking with him and meeting with him several times, flying in out of Washington in those early days, I think of one word that comes to my mind, and that is the word servant. See, his tone and approach never wavered. And in a world of politically driven and charged rhetoric that we live amongst, Howard continued to show us what a true statesman is. Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote, Let your speech be with grace, seasoned with salt. And even in Washington, Howard found a way to do that. I don't believe it's really hit me until the last week of what an honor it is to follow this great man and to try and somehow fill these huge shoes. I'm a little frustrated on a couple things, though, that I'll share with you. One was the fact that he was able to attend every stinking parade, uh, every Eagle Scout pinning, and he had this uncanny ability, as you've heard, to know every high school mascot from here to Wilmington. Recently, a lady came up to me, and she just said right in my face, she said, Northwest, and I quickly said, that way. And I said, oh, Vikings, I, I've got it. Okay, all right. And uh, so uh, thanks, Howard. I appreciate that. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege to be able to pick him up on a Saturday morning, thinking that he may want to go to Biscuitville or get a country ham sandwich. No, he, uh, he wanted a hot dog all the way at 845 on a Saturday morning. And and I said, well, the, the, the VFW, I believe, that has served those, they're not serving those today. He said, i got a connection on the other side of town at a church if you'll just get me there. I said, we'll do that. So he polished off one with slaw and chili in about 20 seconds, Governor. So I, uh, I want to speak to the family for just a moment. Ray and Ray Jr., Brian. I've known Brian and Ray and the family, some of those from Lawndale, where I served as one of the ministers over there. Howard would always ask me, uh, as the music pastor who directed the choir, he said, how's Brian doing in the choir? And I would often say, as long as he doesn't sing too loud, we're, we're okay. So, yeah. But I want to commend you for the, for the grace, the elegance that you've not only handled this time with, but his entire political life. You represented him well in a sense that the, the drama that a lot of times when you see with the families or somebody trying to pursue the attention of the camera it was never your case. The integrity that you showed was amazing. You're to be commended. Staff, you were his family. He often talked about you as a lookout. See Ryan, Janine, Kurt, many of you guys that have served with him faithfully. Brad and Janine and Ryan even serving on our staff now. He loved you guys dearly. And I think you've proven how much you've loved him as well. Thank you for honoring him. The only time I ever heard Howard sing was, I think Paul Norcross had scheduled an event or worked an event in February of last year, 2014. And in fact, I, I have a picture of him uh, singing a few bars of Beulah Land. That was his favorite song there, and uh, he was actually on pitch, which I was very surprised by that. He did a great job with it. And, I, I, and as I think about that, you've heard it mentioned, Beulah Land, but Howard is in a place now where there is no more sickness. There's no more back pain. There's no more skin cancer. And if he could be with us today, I think he would want to make sure that you understood one thing. And that is to be sure about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. No, he didn't wear it on his sleeve, but his Christ-like spirit each and every day represented it in an amazing way. Of course, there may be one more thing that he'd want to share, and that was his joke about Lars and Ollie. Everywhere I went and traveled with him, he would always say, Mark would like for me to share this joke. Half the time that was true. So I'm going to close here. And One day, Lars had been out ice fishing. And he was coming back into town and met up with his buddy, Ollie. Ollie said, Lars, what do you have in that bucket? And Lars said, I have some fish. 
Ollie thought for a moment. He said, if I, uh, if I was to guess how many fish you have in that bucket, would you give me one? And I said, yeah. If you guess, I'll give you both of them. <laughs> Ollie thought for a minute. He said, five. <laughs> Lars said, you missed it by three. <laughs> On behalf of our delegation in Virginia, Patrick, even Heath, Mark, Renee, Alma, George, Richard, Sheriff, our state representatives, our commissioners, our councilmen, our mayor, so many of these people are here today because of the legacy of Howard Coble. May God continue to bless that legacy, the family, and the staff. Thank you.